Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I want to show you some of my beautiful 2020 holdback locality boas. So I actually recently sent out pretty much the last of the 2020 babies and certainly the last shipment for this year. I still have a few Hog Island babies that I'm working on getting established. And so I find that sending the boas to their new homes is one, definitely one of the most satisfying parts of breeding boas. And I think it's only second to discovering the litter of boas that has just been born. It's just really fulfilling getting people's dream snakes out to them to add to their collections. And what's great about this is it also allows me to free up a little bit of space and to focus more on my holdback animals, which I want to show you today. So I actually held back more animals than I had originally planned. It seems like that's always the case. And part of what made this year's litter special is I had two litters of two red tail boas that were second generation breedings, including a litter of Surinams that was sired by this male who was born here in 2014. So it's really exciting to see these projects enter into their next generation. And I couldn't uh, resist but hold back a few really nice animals to represent future breeders here at Brian Boas. So I ended up holding back three trios, so a trio of crawl key boas, a trio of the Suriname red tails sired by this guy, and a trio of Peruvian red tails, Pacalpa Peruvian red tails. So I'm gonna go get up my close-up lens and I'm gonna show you some close-up footage of these beautiful holdback babies. First off, we have some 2020 crawl key dwarf boa holdbacks. And this female I found particularly beautiful, you can see She's got quite a long stripe towards her tail. About a quarter or so of her body length is just a nice stripe where the saddles are fused together. And then you can see she's got some regular blotches on her tail. Uh, and this animal also had this really nice bright silvery color, which you can see. It's interesting to point out that these animals, although they look almost anarthristic lacking red pigments, they do have some, and even as babies, it's a little more pronounced. So if you look closely at her tail, you can see a little bit of red pigment in the tail. And just a really cool laid back animal. You can see she's still pretty small, although these animals have grown quite a bit since they were born. But these are one of the smallest locality boas, only getting to be around four or five feet at maximal size. And I ended up uh, holding back a trio, so this female, another female, and a male who I'll show you in a minute. But just a really nice dwarf locality boa. I think these might well be becoming my favorite locality, or my favorite dwarf locality boa, which, you know, usually I used to think the Tarahumara was my favorite, but no, I'm not quite so sure. And this is my male holdback crawl key boa. And why, the reason I picked this guy is I thought he had a real cool look to his saddles. You can see he's got kind of these irregular, almost jungly looking saddles. They have kind of this geometric shape that's somewhat reminiscent of the pattern of a jungle morph boa. So real cool look to this guy. And with the crawl key boas, I see quite a bit of variability in the patterns of babies. And so I'm wondering if I can selectively breed for these cool aberrant striped and you know jungly looking patterns. And so this guy um, was one of the males and this litter was a little unusual in that there was a preponderance of females, a lot more females than males this, in this litter. And with these guys, people seem to want males because the males get a little smaller. In fact, the male who's the father of this guy is barely four feet. He's probably just under maybe three and a half feet. And he's a really cool laid back animal that I feature in a lot of my videos. And I think people that wanted a pet boa, they were drawn to the fact that if you get a dwarf male, it might be like a foot shorter or so than the females. So my males sold out really fast, but the females don't get that big either. So if you got a female, it's not gonna get that big. He's trying to get away here. Uh, let me just grab him. So in addition to this male and female, I held back one additional female. And so I have a pretty good group of holdbacks. I got some from my 2017 litter as well that will be the future of breeding of crawl key boas uh, at my breeding facility. Next, I wanna show you some of my Suriname red tail holdbacks. 
And this was a female that really stood out probably the best in the whole litter, I would have to say, although there were uh, quite a few that were, you know, not too far behind. They were all really nice animals. This female probably looked the most like the father, the guy, the snake that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Just a very clean pattern overall. She's not as quite as peaked as the father. She's got a little bit less pronounced peaks, but still a very beautiful animal. Very nice symmetrical saddles. And then the killer long red tail. Look at that tail. It's just gorgeous tail. You can see she's kind of twitching her tail a little bit, which is a sign that she's maybe a little uncomfortable. So I won't uh, film her for very long. But beautiful, clean looking animal. Uh, colorful animal. Not quite as colorful as some of the others in the litter. And actually one animal that I really, really liked, I ended up uh, selling to somebody. It was, you know, super colorful, but, you know, unfortunately, I can't keep them all. That was probably my favorite that I didn't hold back, but um, I'm really happy with the three that I held back, and, of course, you can't keep them all. But this is a beautiful, clean-looking Suriname, and looking forward to watching her grow. Here's my other holdback female, and this is another gorgeous example. You can see she's got this beautiful, clean, kind of a... a pastel-y, lilac -y color. This female doesn't have quite the same level of contrast as the female I just showed you, and her tail isn't quite as long, but she's got this beautiful, clean, almost pastel, purplish look to her. This beautiful colors. Real nice boa. This animal has uh, slightly more peak saddles than the first female I showed you. But overall, just a nice, beautiful, classic example of a true red tail from Suriname, and she's Trying to get away on me. Just give you one more quick look before I put her back in her enclosure. And last and certainly not least, we have probably my most anticipated litter for 2020, which was my Pacalpa Peruvian litter. And this guy, as you can see, he's not too happy about being on camera now. So we'll uh, not get him out for very long. But this is my holdback male, a beautiful, beautiful animal. These beautiful bow tie shaped saddles with the, you know, kind of thin in the middle and the beautiful uh, bright white crescent shape within the saddle. Uh, beautiful red tail. I don't know if he's gonna let me show you his tail because he's not very happy. And these animals have been a little nippy. They'll probably calm down by the time they're a year or so. You can see how beautiful and long and red that tail is. Just a gorgeous, ooh, he's just not happy. Just a gorgeous example. And I was super excited to produce this litter because their mother I've had for about 10 years and I tried breeding her previously and I wasn't successful. And this year I tried with a different male who is one of my holdbacks from 2014, or 2015 rather, and he got the job done. So super excited about this animal. I'm gonna get him back in his tub in a minute here. But just give you one more look at how gorgeous this guy is. So just one more animal for today's video. And this is the sister of the male Pacalpa I just showed you. You can see she's not much happier, so we'll keep this brief. But just a gorgeous, gorgeous example of a Peruvian red tail. You know, really nice thin saddles, very high contrast. You can see how contrasty the white crescents in the saddles are and then the tail is just gorgeous and sometimes the Peruvian red tails don't have quite the same long red tail as the Surinams but I think this litter has really nice tails maybe not quite as bright red as my Surinams but this beautiful kind of darker brick red uh, so just a gorgeous example hopefully she'll calm down a little bit in you know over the next year or so uh, but looking forward to watching this one grow. Um, they do get really nice gold color when they get older. They start out kind of a little bit gray. But you can see the, these babies are already starting to get in their beautiful golden color. So these animals, I imagine, they're going to be knockouts when they reach uh, full size. There you have it. Those are a few of my 2020 holdback animals. 
and I'm really excited about watching these animals grow and develop. I think that they represent top-notch examples of the localities and will be a great addition for the future breeding projects here at Brian Boas. And now I can start to focus on the 2021 breeding season with my pairings literally just a few weeks or so away. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.